Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing with the 1858 match uh, between Paul Charles Morphy and Johan Jakob Leventhal. Uh, in the previous game, game 9, uh, Morphy had a winning position but he pushed the pawn on the wrong side of the board, uh, then he had an equal position and then he blundered the game uh, in a king and pawn endgame. Uh, which is great for Leventhal as he got his second victory in the match. Now this is already uh, game 10, no draws, uh, so nine victory, sorry, <laughs> 7 victories for Morphy and 2 for Leventhal uh, and the match continues. And this is one a very nice game where we are going to learn uh, a thing or two about rook lifts. Now, uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Morphy with the white pieces opens with e4, uh, and here Lovental doesn't go uh, with the same idea as in the previous game. He went for the Philidor's defense, uh, but rather e6. He goes for the French defense. Morphy uh, grabs hold of the center with d4, and we have d5. Sorry about that. Uh, and Morphy goes e captures on d5, which is something you just don't do because uh, this e equalizes the game instantly for black. Uh, like it's uh, it it's just something you don't do. The, uh, playing the exchange uh, French with white is uh, you know uh, as as a me uh, the great Misha once said uh, a crime against chess. As, as is basically playing for a draw. But I don't think Morphy went for it uh, for those reasons. I think he just didn't care what he played against Lovental as he uh, well he didn't consider Lovental to be his equal uh, nor anyone else for that matter. So I, I think he just played anything. So e captures on d5 and now knight to f3. Uh, we have knight to f6 and now we see oh, there's already uh, a completely symmetrical position which is not something you want to uh, strive for with uh, with white uh, on move 3. Uh, so bishop to d3, we have bishop to d6 by black and castles. We have castles by black and knight to c3. And here black uh, breaks symmetry, of course you cannot uh, keep the symmetry forever, so c6 and now uh, bishop to g5. Pinning that knight, we have h6, Lowenthal asks Morphy what do you want to do, do you want to go back, do you want to uh, trade here? Trading doesn't really make much sense as you just help black develop his queen. So bishop back to h4 and now bishop to g4. And this is all standard theory in 2020, so there's not much to improve on the exchange French, one of the reasons you, you simply don't play it. Uh, we have h3, challenging the bishop, and here a nice captures, captures. Uh, followed by knight b to d7, adding another defender to the knight. So bishop to f5, here Morphy uh, wants to play bishop captures here and then either uh, get some action going on here or to... Uh, to this uh, dislodge um, uh, Lovental's pieces. So here, queen to c7. And now, what do you do here? Well, now you could go for captures, but it doesn't really matter because the queen is no longer here. You'll just be uh, able to recapture with the knight. So not much sense in going for that. And here, rook a to e1 by Morphy. Now, getting the rook to the, uh, to the open e file, the only open file on the board. And here is what I mean by uh, a nice... Uh, uh, well, lesson on rook lifts. Uh, and here uh, it is as of move 13 that this position has never been reached again. Some of you have been saying in the comments that uh, why don't I say that uh, it's as of move 13 that we have a completely new game. If I was making this video in 1858, uh, I would say that. But it'd be weird if I said that now, making the video in 2020, that this position has never been reached again. Uh, I think it's more earthly to say that uh, this position has uh, never been reached again. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, because, uh, I mean, it, it hasn't been reached for good reasons, obviously. So, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, I, if I was making the video back then, I, I'd say uh, we have a completely new game, but now I say the position has never been reached again. So, rook 8 to e8. Uh, of course, Lowenthal gets his rook to the only open file on the board, which is the e file. And here, Morphy goes rook to e3, which is a very nice rook lift, and you want to play rook to e1, double up, and hopefully uh, claim uh, the, the e file for yourself. Now, uh, for those of you who are new maybe to rook lifts, uh, this is something you always want to do. Uh, so, why not make a rook lift with rook to e2. The problem with rook to e2 that is that black very happily trades here, just captures, captures, and then rook to e8, and it's actually black who gains control of the e-file uh, for his rooks. So instead, by playing rook to e3, uh, while black can also trade now, it's not as favorable, because here after captures, white will capture with the pawn, and this is uh, no longer an open file. So rook to e8 will not be so so potent. Uh, you've improved your uh, control in the center. You now have two points in the center and you have a semi-open f file to use for your queen and for your rook. So that's why a rook to e3 is a much better rook lift than rook to e2. 
uh, just uh, thought I'd throw that in there. So rook to e3 by Morphe, and now uh, uh, bishop to f4. Lovental says, okay, that's a bit of a too nice uh, over rook lift, so let's just, uh, you know, t take it back a few steps. So now well, Morphe can either go back all the way to e1, uh, which is a possibility, but Morphe now says, okay, now let's trade. I'm going to play rook to e2 either way. And now you can claim the e file for yourself, but only temporarily. So rook captures and now knight captures. So not allowing rook e8 just yet because knight captures here. So here bishop back to d6 and now bishop captures on d7 by Morphe. Uh, we have knight captures and now knight to g3. Uh, preparing to get the knight over to f5, which of course uh, uh, Loventhal doesn't allow. So bishop captures, uh, uh, sorry, not right away, first rook to e8. Uh, first he claims the e-file for himself, which was the kind of the whole point of the game. Now Morphe unable to play uh, rook to e1, uh, goes knight to f5. He does claim the f-file for his knight. Uh, and here... Uh, it's very hard for black to bring his knight ba uh, back into the game. For example, if you go just knight f6, then knight captures on h6. You capture and the queen picks up the knight. So the knight has to do something else. So while bishop to f here, uh, bishop to f8 here would seem uh, like a reasonable idea, uh, Lovental goes knight back to f8. Now he wants to bring the knight to h7 and then to g5. So Morphe goes bishop back to g3. He offers a trade now. We have captures, captures, and now rook to e4. Another very nice rook lift, uh, putting pressure on the pawn here. So for the moment, the knight cannot move. And here, c3. Morphe just uh, adds more protection to the d4 pawn. And now knight to h7, preparing knight to g5 to go after the queen on f3. So h4, Morphe stops that. Uh, and here, h5. Lovental again with his tricks trying to get Morphe to, to go for the pawn where he would uh, fall victim to g6. And even though you have some checks, for example, check, check, and check, uh, you don't have anything. For example, if you if you sacrifice the, the knight, there is just no attack happening here, and black is very happy being up a piece. So after this h5 move, we have c4 by Morphe, uh, trying to overload the pawn. You cannot defend both of these guys. Uh, and now comes, uh, well, a move that really shouldn't have happened for Loventhal, uh, he should go queen somewhere like d7 or d8, keep an eye on the d5 pawn, uh, also maybe queen b6, put pressure, uh, put more pressure on, on this pawn, making it hard for the knight to move, try and bait c5, uh, also a possibility, but he played knight to f6, it's like he completely forgot why he rerouted the knight all the way from f8 to h7, and he just played knight back to f6, but luckily, uh, you haven't uh, and you've been paying attention so now feel free to pause the video and win this game for Morphe uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on paying attention and you know exactly what's happening and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it's of course knight captures on g7. Same idea as with grabbing the h pawn now you, you don't capture and capture the knight but you just eliminate the defender of the knight. So here capturing this loses terribly just captures with check king f8 uh, king g8 also loses uh, but I'm just going to show king f8 because it's much nicer. Uh, queen h8 check, forcing king e7, and now a nice rook sacrifice, captures queen h7 check, king moves, and you pick up the queen, so uh, beautiful stuff right there. So after knight captures on g7, uh, Lowenthal says, okay, I, I can't capture the knight right away, however, knight to g4, and you know, the, the position is a bit more complicated now, but not for Morphe, he just captures the h pawn, and now says, what do, you, what do you have here? We have rook captures on d4, and now Morphe uh, goes into a forced trade. Knight f6 check. We have captures and the queen captures here. And now, uh, what do you play here? Uh, well, here, uh, it's, uh, it's a really a tough position, but the only way to prolong the game uh, for black and to keep fighting is rook to g4. And rook to g4 is a key defensive move for black here. However, Lowenthal said, uh, why, why don't I just grab another pawn? And that's exactly what he did. He played rook captures on c4, uh, but now, uh, you know, once again, feel free to pause the video and win this game for Morphe. Once again, uh, while well, I give you a few more seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the uh, 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 unstoppable mating threat. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to f5. And now uh, you will see that there is no defense against rook h5 to rook h8 checkmate. So if the rook was here, uh, just rook g7 prevents that as the queen would not be able to, to guard this square. So Lowenthal thought, 
Okay, I can still play my rook to g4, and yes, now if Morphe goes rook h5, rook g7 stops checkmate. However, uh, he missed that uh, while you can also do this checkmate this way, you can also do it this way. And now there's not much you can do here. Uh, here we have uh, queen to c7. Uh, uh, sorry, queen to c8. If you go king to f8 to try and prevent this, uh, wow, uh, this uh, rook, uh, rook lift, uh, just queen h6 check. Now the king has to go back, uh, or rather if you go back it's checkmate, so you'd have to block with the rook, uh, and then just rook to g5 and white wins the rook. So that's out of the, out of the question. So after this rook to e5, now threatening this, queen to c8, guarding the e, uh, d8 square, but now comes rook to e7, going after the f7 pawn. There was a there was a quicker way to end the game here for Morphe, just rook h5. And now the, the point is after rook to g7 stopping checkmate, you just have queen h6. It's unstoppable. And uh, the point you have to find is king f8. Now rook g5 again wins the rook. Uh, but Morphe, known for his uh, playing moves instantly and uh, not really thinking that his opponents are able to defend, goes for rook to e7. So he allows a, a, a nice temporary defensive idea uh, with queen to f8 guarding the pawn here. And now queen to e5 by Morphe. Now threatening uh, rook to e8 to, uh, to, to win the queen. Uh, and here it seems like you can uh, save yourself with rook to e4, but it doesn't. It only appears that way because rook to e4, while it, it it looks great, it's really not because queen g5 check, queen to g7 blocks, and now you simply trade off everything, captures, 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 captures. And although to an untrained trained eye, it seems that the game is only uh, beginning here. Uh, if uh, you know your king and pawn endgames, you know that uh, black is completely lost here. So here, white plays g4, prevents uh, black from playing f5, and the king and pawn endgame is winning for white. Because of the uh, past h pawn, white is just too fast. So if black doesn't stop white king from uh, grabbing this pawn, then he's just going to win easily. And if he tries to do exactly that, then king e3, and now you start pushing the h pawn, the black king will have to go after it, and then you're just going to start uh, gobbling up material. So while it seems that you can may maybe hold uh, Morphe probably, knew this when he played rook to e7 and then uh, of course he he missed nothing so queen to g7 offering a queen trade but now rook to e8 with check we have king to h7 now comes queen to h5 check and it was in this position on move 34 that johan jakob leventhal resigned the game and game 10 of the match goes to paul charles morphy which uh, who now leads the match 8 to 2 so here you resign because uh, the king has nowhere to go. Your only move here is to block with the queen, but then the rook is left defenseless and queen captures just ends the game. So really, really uh, amazing stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little bit about rook lifts. For those of you who are maybe new to new to chess, I uh, hope you found that um, a little bit of information valuable. Uh, and uh, uh, well, this whole uh, this whole. Uh, uh, th this whole game was just uh, very interesting because Lovental uh, realized that it was really, really difficult to bring the knight back into the game from that d7 square. And then it's like he completely forgot uh, what, what, what was happening. So, like he he uh, deliberately rerouted the knight like this. Uh, and then in the end, he still put it uh, on f6, which, uh, I mean, just uh, loses the game for him. So uh, Lovental, great player, great positional player, understands chess, understands like the basic principles, the end game. Uh, I mean, he he understands what's happening but he just misses uh a little a little things like this so and it's something that uh, that was a common trait uh, amongst uh, a lot of morphe's uh, opponents in those days uh but like i said we are going further with the saga we're going to meet some stronger opponents and it's going to be it's going to be pretty wild so uh once again uh, i do hope you enjoyed it uh if you're wondering about what is the age of kais and what is the countdown well it's something that i'm going to explain in a video uh, that will be uh, solely made for addressing that, but it's uh, basically a project we've been working on for like a year and a half. Uh, it's basically a chess manga, and for those of you who will say, but it's not a manga if it's not coming from Japan, uh, okay, it's, it's a chess manga slash chess comic slash uh, web series. Uh, kind of thing where we where we you know have fun try to promote chess and our first chapter is being published in exactly two days uh, on the uh, new website agadmatter.com which yet uh, is not public but it will be yeah, in two days but i will will inform you as I, i'm planning to make a separate video on that uh, but we already uh, have some social media so if you're interested in following the age of kaisa if you want to be one of the 
first followers to get some, uh, you know, little bits of information, do check it out. The first link in the description below will be a link to Age of Kaisa Twitter page, uh, where you can, you know, uh, follow what, what's happening, what's, uh, what's going to be published, uh, you can ask questions, uh, everything will be answered, of course, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, once again, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Kimura, Christopher Reynolds, uh, Andreas Weidiger, uh, Ivy, and Nicholas Kiefer for contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.